You know, at 15 years old, I had a Little League baseball coach pick up the phone and ask me to help him coach a junior pro basketball team. Little did I know that that question would lead me to my true vocation in life of coaching people to reach their deepest human potential. You know, I believe everybody needs a coach in life because a great coach will do three things for you. They'll make you have conversations you don't want to have. They'll make you do some things you don't want to do, but they'll help you become something you didn't think you could become. Throughout the course of two days, I have coached five people in how to look different and run faster, how to be true zebras that stand out and cheat us that are agile. You see, in a saturated and commoditized world, there's never been a better time for you to stand out versus fit in. I'm Michael Burt, and I'm a coachypreneur, and I'm coaching these people into being zebras and cheetahs. Coach. Hey man, how are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Coach, on all the videos that were uploaded to YouTube, they wanted to be participants in the Zebras and Cheetahs television show. We've got five unique individuals that came to Michael Bird Enterprises to be coached by you. Man, I can't wait. Over the next two days, I'm going to teach them how to look different, how to run faster, and how to be agile. Coach, the first one, Jason. He's a former football coach and English teacher. He's got the entrepreneurial spirit and he's looking for change. Mm. You know, Gandhi said, we must become the change we seek to create in the world. I'm excited about coaching this guy. He's a former coach like me, and he's got some fire. Coach the second one, Amina. She works 60 to 70 hours in her sister's transportation business. She's also caught the entrepreneur spirit. Got a fashion line. Coach, she's looking for freedom. The only way to buy time, freedom, money, freedom is to become an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur takes lower level resources to higher levels of productivity. That girl's got lots of talent. I think she could be a major designer. Coach, the third one, Brandon. Husband, father of two. Former basketball player. Coach, he's looking for a lot of clarity, but most of all, he's looking for an opportunity. Mm. Seven billion people on planet Earth. There is no shortage of opportunity. There's no scarcity thinking. We gotta think in terms of abundance. There's enough for everybody. We're gonna teach that guy how to go out and get what's his. The fourth one is Cody, a recent college graduate. Had a lot of opportunities in his life. Created a patent and he's working on a process to be an entrepreneur. Coach, he's looking for growth. Man, I'm excited about a college graduate because I, can, I can't tell you how sick I am of seeing college graduates come out that are underprepared for the world. They don't look different. They don't run faster. They want to know how many days they're going to get off and how fast they can get paid. I'm going to teach that kid how to really be a big time entrepreneur. Great coach and our final one, Christy, number five. She's been a single mom, a stay-at-home mom, and also a professional business development in IT. Coach, she's looking to write a book. She's also looking for victory. You know, when I wrote my first book at 25, I remember saying this to people, if life's worth living, it's worth writing down. Everybody should write the book of their life. Victory to me is seeing an idea through to its logical conclusion, having the discipline to stay the course. I'm excited about these five people, Brock, because we're going to teach them in two days how to transform their life from low thoughts of value to high thoughts of value. We're going to teach them what's in my new book, Zebras and Cheetahs. We're going to teach them to look different, because in a world of sameness, a commoditized world, in a saturated world, and there's never been a better time we need to look different and run faster. My job, to coach the hell out of these people for these two days. And when they leave, they look different and they run faster. I'm ready to go. Hayden, let's get going. Okay, coach. I was born in 1974 in the big metropolis town of Ider, Alabama. That's a population of about 536 counting chickens and dogs. <laughs> Graduated from Cumberland University with a Bachelor of Arts degree and majored in English. So I began substitute teaching, trying to stay top of mind uh, with the powers that be, the principals and stuff that hired, and I thought things were going well. But first year came and went, summer comes around and teachers and the principals start getting ready to hire teachers and I get passed over. 
in my mind, I figure I have just, I haven't paid my dues yet. Second summer rolls around and time, comes time to uh, <laughs> hire for jobs and I get passed over not once or twice, but several times. I knew I was the best person for the job. I felt like I should have had the starting position and I didn't get it. And I was tired of standing on the sidelines. And I got pissed off and I decided I could do one or two things. I could take my ball and go home or I could take my ball and go to a different playground. I have business ideas. I have notebooks, I have notebooks full of ideas and, and meticulous notes, notebooks full of them. And I don't want to end up being an old man and wondering, well, those ideas will work. You know, could I have made it as an entrepreneur, as a businessman? I want to know that. Yes or no? I think too much in this country, in this world, we're used to hear, hearing feel good stuff. Feel good, but people won't tell you the truth. I think Coach Burt is someone who's willing to piss you off, tell you the things that you don't want to hear, uh, have those conversations you don't want to have. That's his niche. Well, I guess you could say I am your typical girl next door. No one in my family had been to college before. In my sophomore year, I met my future husband. We married and moved to a town in Tennessee. A couple years later, I'd been working. We found out we were pregnant. We decided I would stay home with our daughter. And so all of a sudden I went from being a very successful professional woman to being at home with a baby. And so I felt very alone, very lonely. I went into a down spiral. I became what I never ever ever thought that I would. And I lived a double life, was in an affair. When people found out it was very ugly, I truly felt like I had that that red letter A, and it was almost too much to handle. I remember at the lowest point, contemplating suicide. Like I just needed to find a woman that had been where I'd been, that had done what I'd done in the church, that had lived to tell about it, and I could not find anyone. I couldn't even find a book on Christian women and adultery. I'm determined to be the woman that I needed to talk to seven years ago and I'm willing to air my dirty laundry as a Southern Christian woman about my experience and about my story if it will help one woman not get to where I was or one woman get out of where I've been or maybe one woman that's carrying her secret help her find freedom and forgiveness for herself. The mess I caused, I want it to be a message. You can lose everything. You can lose your family. You can lose your reputation. You can lose your hope. You can lose your dreams. And then you can pick yourself back up. And you can have new dreams. And you can be better. And I believe in that. I'm meant to do big things. But I don't know how to get there. And so I need a slingshot. When I heard Coach Michael Burt speak, I knew I wanted to work with him. He could be my slingshot to get me to that next level, to help me help others. Because my story isn't about me anymore. I've come full circle. My story is for other people. My name is Brandon Maxwell, and part of my story uh, is, is that uh, up until I got my sophomore year, finishing out my sophomore year at Glencliff High School, I was Brandon Brantley. Wrote it down and everything. Uh, I've never seen my birth certificate, even my social security card said Brandon Brantley on it. And when I got to Glencliff High School, they, that's the first time I saw my birth certificate and it said the name Brandon Maxwell, which completely threw me for a loop. I didn't understand it all, but um, eventually that's when my mom told me that the guy who I thought was my father was not my father. Uh, and, and actually the guy who was my father had decided to abandon us uh, when she was 19 years old. Uh, and so I, I didn't really have a strong tie to men. I hated, I hated guys. I, I had my sisters and my little brother. Uh, but that was it uh, until I moved to Nashville when I met uh, my youth pastor uh, at Green Street Church of Christ. And, uh, and that man uh, changed, he changed my life. Um, without, without meeting him, um, I don't think I would be here uh, if it wasn't because of him. He invested in me. And when I got to college um, and I started digging uh, for my father, I wanted to know why. You know, why did you leave? Uh, because I wanted him, I needed him, I felt like. I see all these other guys, uh, you know, taking their sons fishing and playing basketball and doing all this other stuff. And I'm like, 
where is that for me? So I went back to my mom to start digging and asking her for questions, a answers for it. Um, but she told me that he actually did not walk out on us. She told him she was just going to abort me. So to this day, right now, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know I'm alive. Uh, I, I don't believe in chance, so I want to grab a hold of all of that uh, and become a better, my, better me. If you hang around with four or five broke people, uh, you'll be the sixth. Uh, but if you hang around one millionaire, someone who's not just been given it, but someone who's earned it, that proximity right there can change your life. Uh, and that's what I want. Uh, and so that's what I'm here to do. I'm originally from Bosnia. I moved here in 94. Uh, the reason I'm here is because of the war that has started in 92 in Bosnia. I was mad at my parents. Um, I was mad at people that brought me you know, here, but I was too young to realize what was really going on. So I went to school and I didn't know English. Uh, it took about nine months to be able to speak it and understand most of it but I did not give up. My work ethic is strong and I, I got there from my parents. Uh, I put myself through college. I always had two, three jobs. Um, I didn't want to ask for my parents for help. They gave me a, a chance to move here. That was enough for me. And I graduated with a fashion degree. And now I do design my own clothes um, and working for my sister. She has a trucking company. We started very, very small and now it's, it's huge. Um, but I feel like I built her business, not my business. Fashion is my passion. This is who I am. I express myself through fashion. And now it's my time. I'm, I'm here for a reason. I want 2014 to be so different from this year. Well, I was born in Gallatin, Tennessee, and I was probably six or seven years old. I came in from school one day, and my sister was fumbling through some papers, and I ended up finding out I was adopted, my real mother. She was really, really bad into drugs and couldn't take care of me or my sister. But at the same time, I, I really didn't care. I mean, because they gave me so much love. My parents really couldn't afford too much for us. We were the only white kids in the neighborhood. My sister was in a gang, and uh, we used to have uh, people come throw bricks through the windows. And I was so scared. I just remember one night peeing all over myself because I'm so scared. And I tried running out the door, and I was scared to death. We ended up moving to Hendersonville. Um, before I started middle school because the house that we were in, the roof ended up caving in and it just wasn't a livable place. I remember that computers were just really, you know, gaining traction at that time and I actually went dumpster diving several times, you know. Sure enough, one day I, I found a computer in there and it was, uh, I it had a busted out screen in it so I took it back up to the house and took my dad's tools and uh, took it apart and I rode my bike up to the local hardware store and put an order in for a new screen. I fixed it up and turned it on, and yeah, I ended up fixing the computer, and it was our first family computer. And I think that's really what uh, was the molding of me becoming an entrepreneur. I, I didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it, it was probably one of the best moments as a child because I was able to give back to my parents. Um, for the past four years, I've been working for myself uh, as an entrepreneur. I do private bartending, I do uh, landscaping, and I repair iPhones and iPads out of my house. And it's been so lucrative that I've been able to pay for two semesters of college. Uh, I'll be the first to graduate in my family. I graduate college in eight days, and uh, I want to I grow from this experience. You know, transition out of college into the real world, not, not walking, but running, sprinting. People don't eat out because they're hungry. They eat out for the experience. The experience comes from the atmosphere, from service, from food, from value, for everything. And so we give them more of that by making certain that the service is impeccable from beginning to end. Seasonings that we have started with our Demas' seasoning salt, which my father created that seasoning a long time ago. And we have since created a couple of extra seasonings like our Cajun seasoning and our chili seasoning. 75% of our menu is made with these seasonings. So these seasonings are great on anything that you can have. Demas's, bring your family to dine with our family. FM Mortgage is your local full service mortgage lender. A top five lender with THDA and RD, FM prides itself on fast expert service. Belinda Arinder of Murfreesboro is a 20 year mortgage veteran. An award winning, top producing mortgage originator, Belinda is a recognized expert in the mortgage industry. Getting you home with less stress is the goal. FM Mortgage and Belinda Arinder can help make this goal a reality. 
contact Belinda at 615-416-4464. Guys, you're here. You're here because you want more for your life, more for your business, more for your family. So in this session, I'm gonna teach you how to become a zebra and a cheetah. And here's the simple analogy. A zebra looks different than all the other animals in the animal kingdom. When you see a zebra, it's obvious that it's a zebra. It stands out. You see, a cheetah runs faster than all the other animals in the animal kingdom which has to do with your mindset, your speed, how fast you see opportunity, how fast you jump on opportunity. You are a deal maker versus an order taker. You're a true entrepreneur. And whether you own your own business or you work for somebody else, you think like an entrepreneur. A person takes low level resources to high levels of productivity, low thoughts of value to high thoughts of value. And when you go out into the world after this, after this experience, you truly know what makes you special. So to me, it's real simple, it's three steps. Find your special, package your special, sell your special. The most frustrating part of me writing this book, Zebras and Cheetahs, about differentiation is only one out of 10 people even get why they need to look different and run faster. So in this session, I'm gonna teach you real simple how to do that. But to do it, you know, I, I, I gotta put my, I gotta get into costume. Because if I'm going to write a book about looking different and running faster, then I got to start practicing what I preach, right? So let's look at what a zebra is. So the first step is to create a separation in how you look and how you talk and how you brand yourself and market yourself. The second thing, once you understand this, is how to become a cheetah, possess this great speed. They tell us you have less than 2.7 seconds before you become deletable. So if you walk up and you don't know who you are, why you matter, why people should have a relationship with you, you're out. So I'm gonna teach you how to think like a cheetah thinks. How to become an immediate asset. So when you walk in to sell what you've got, which you will tomorrow, to a board of zebras and cheetahs, they will know immediately if you're fake. And it starts by looking different. Nothing sets you up for failure later in life than to walk into a job interview and look like everybody else. Walk into a sales pitch to sell what you've got and say the reason you should do business with us is because of our quality, our service, our relationships, and our experience. You know how many times people have heard that? There's a part of the brain called the Barocca, the first 10% of, part of the brain that says this. When it hears something over and over and over, repetitive, it just blocks it out. You can't market yourself until you know you're special. You can't brand yourself until you know you're special. You can't have a conversation with another person about why they should have a relationship with you if you don't know what your special is. Because if you're not, you're just a commodity. And a commodity means I can get you anywhere. And the biggest challenge of the small business owner, the entrepreneur like you, who's trying to build a personal brand is obscurity. It's not that you don't have something incredibly valuable, it's just not enough people know who the hell you are. So really the concept of becoming a zebra and cheetah in my mind is, is three real simple steps. One, you gotta avoid commoditization, saturation, sameness, boring. The great Jim Rohn said, to attract other people, we must become attractive. And the way we do this is create an unfair advantage. So I gotta teach you and share with you where an unfair advantage comes from. It comes from your unique past your unique experiences, the unique education you've got. Here's a good one, the unique struggle that you've been through. It actually becomes an advantage to you versus a disadvantage to you. So when you walk in tomorrow to make your pitch to this board, you gotta articulate, this is why I'm not a commodity. You can't get me anywhere. There's something about you that I can't get anywhere else. And here's what I know when I can't get it anywhere else. Christy, you know what I'll do? I'll pay more money for it. So let's go to a networking meeting in the morning where everybody stands up and says, hi, I'm so-and-so and I'm a real estate agent. Hi, I'm a banker. Hi, I'm a CPA. What if I said, hi, I'm a motivational speaker? Other people around the room are going, so what? And then they're attaching some type of connotation in their mind based on what they thought about those people in the past. 
CPAs are boring. Bankers are boring. That group doesn't make any money. Real estate agents are lazy. See, you don't ever want people to think those things about you and to put you in a commoditized trap. So you gotta be able to get up in front of a group of people and say, here's who I am and here's why I matter and here's why you should have a relationship with me. So if you're in commoditized industries, the insurances of the world, the banking of the world, the real estate of the world, where there's so many competitors, now I'm looking at you and going, hmm, I need a relationship with that person because they are unique. Every one of us has met a person that immediately we're turned on to those people. The first thing we're turned on to their energy. Didn't matter what they were selling, we were turned on to their likability, their connectivity, right? But then they've got a small window to position themselves as legitimate in the world. So think of it like this. Over here are your talents that you have accumulated your whole life. Over here is somebody who is dying to have those talents. And when you can find those people that need exactly what you've got and articulate it to them in such a way that they say, I gotta have this. You won't have to go out and sell anymore, chase business. So here's, here's a strategy for you. In every interaction you have, ask this question. How can I add unique value? If our book doesn't sell, I can blame my agent, I can blame our publicist, I can blame the publisher, I can blame the bookstores. Me and my co-author, Kobe Juvenville, we can blame each other. But you know what we can say? Maybe we just need to write a better damn book. This two-day experience is about getting better. It's about getting better. So your first call to action tonight, your first challenge, is you will have 20 minutes to contact and get on the phone as many people as you can to ask them what makes you a zebra? What is your unique advantage in the market? And what we're looking for is consistency of answers. Because here's the deal, most of the time, other people can recognize our zebra qualities faster than we can. Because you don't even see it. It is so obvious to others, but it's so natural to you. You know what, it's factory installed. It's factory installed. So the person that comes back with the most calls, with the most consistency, that means that you have articulated your special in a pretty unique way that people get it. People get it. The Zebra Challenge. Look different, run faster, stay agile. You've got 20 minutes to make as many calls. Go. later but I need you to explain to me right now what makes me a zebra why do I stand out from the rest of the pack uh, I don't know like, what makes what's my special what's my special what makes me different than other people uh, what's my special my gift of gas anything else uh, let's see your gift of gas your ability to I guess it's a lot of it wrong there gets the cab go to see your ability to strike up a conversation with anybody. My ability to strike up a conversation with anybody, that's good. Alright, I gotta go. I'll explain later. I'll call you back later and explain. Okay? Alright, bye. Alright, bye. Come on. I know everybody's so far ahead of me. 
Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. What's up, Dennis? Okay, I'm on this show, this TV show, and I'm in a challenge, and I'm calling people to see what they think is unique about me. I would say the thing that is most unique about you out of everyone that I know it's definitely your ability to just be super supportive and helpful to other people through adversity. Through adversity, awesome. Well, thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Say hello to the kids, okay, I gotta go. Hello, can you tell me what do you find unique about me? All right, thank you. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Glory, you on the speakerphone. Sorry, I gotta be really fast. We're doing this challenge for the show, and I need to know what makes me unique, different. Uh, Dr. Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> one minute. No. One minute. A little different. Okay. That's pretty unique and different. Yes. Um, I would think your uh, also your um, your your fashion sense is artistic. Okay. You help me a lot. Thank you, honey. You got ten seconds, guys. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Contest is over. Put down the phones. Come back in and get your seat. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Guys, we, have, we, we had you do that challenge for a real simple reason. The world has been so conditioned from a commoditized standpoint to say very generic things. You're a good person. You're a good listener. You got good charisma. You got good connectivity. And although these are traits and attributes that you should be proud of, it's really not enough to get attention in the world. We got to take those attributes that, that your friends and colleagues and loved ones told you and we got to package them up in a way that, that says this is what I've got. Okay, And it's usually the collusion or synergy between these talents that you have that makes you unique. So it's like I got three unique talents, three special abilities. You know, my first business coach made me write down 50 times what my company did. 50. That was our homework. And every time it had to be something different. We had to get up in front of the class and articulate this is what my company does. And he was brutal. But when we got to number 38, when we got to number 38, he did this and pointed at me and he said, that's it. That's what you do. That's the essence of what we're doing here. Is I'm getting you to work muscles you've never worked before. We had a hell of a day. We had a hell of a day, right? I'm going to tell you this, this is real important. Right at the edge of your discomfort is where you grow. We want to live a remarkable life. And to, re to live a remarkable life, you got to get uncomfortable. you got to do things we don't want to do. I mean, you got after it today, okay? You come back tomorrow, we're going to get after it again because I'm going to put you in front of three board members. These three people are going to sit across the boardroom, and they're going to look at you, and they're going to ask the so what question. But here's what I know, you've you got a good coach and I'm gonna get you ready to walk in there and knock this thing out. I want you to get some rest, because we got a full day tomorrow of, of more coaching. People don't eat out because they're hungry. They eat out for the experience. The experience comes from the atmosphere, from service, from food, from value, for everything. And so we give them more of that by making certain that the service is impeccable from beginning to end. Seasonings that we have started with our Demas' seasoning salt, which my father created that seasoning a long time ago. And we have since created a couple of extra seasonings like our Cajun seasoning and our chili seasoning. 75% of our menu is made with these seasonings. So these seasonings are great on anything that you can have. Demas's, bring your family to dine with our family. FM Mortgage is your local full service mortgage lender. A top five lender with THDA and RD, FM prides itself on fast expert service. 
Belinda Arinder of Murfreesboro is a 20-year mortgage veteran. An award-winning, top-producing mortgage originator, Belinda is a recognized expert in the mortgage industry. Getting you home with less stress is the goal. FM Mortgage and Belinda Arinder can help make this goal a reality. Contact Belinda at 615-416-4464. All right, guys, welcome to day two. You came back, which tells me something about you because we got done last night late. And today we're gonna take you through the concrete jungle. We're gonna find out uh, who looks different, who runs faster, and who is truly agile. So we start off with crucial conversations, one-to-ones with me and you. And I can tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do what a good coach does. I'm gonna have conversations with you you may not wanna have. So we're gonna go through that to get you ready to pitch and then we're going to go through the cheetah challenge where you go and, and, and you actually go through a challenge where you got to think fast like a cheetah. And then we're going to end up in the boardroom. You, three executives, you pitching what makes you look different and run faster than everybody in the world. So let's have a big day today. My, my trainer always says, Rod Q, when we get ready to do something really tough, he always says, get your mind ready for what your body's about to do. <laughs> You got to get your mind ready for what your body's about to do because we're going to put you through it and it's going to be fun and it's going to be transformational. It's going to be transformational. So let's go out there today and win. Hey, coach. Down there, fella. Brandon, man, I've had a lot of fun coaching you. I mean, I think you have the seeds of some real greatness in you. But the confidence, how do you temper that so that people are not turned off? Because we don't want people turned off. Yeah. We want people turned on, right. right? You know, when you think about confidence, to me there's a difference between confidence and boldness and arrogance. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation once with Wendy Grisham, and I told her what I wanted to do in the world and, yeah. and how I wanted to impact the world. And right as I walked out, right as she walked out of the meeting after three hours of us going at it, she said, you really want to make a dent in the world? And I said, yes. And she turned around and looked at me and she said, then don't make it about you. If you want to make a dent in the world, make it about everybody else. Use your talents, right? Yeah, right. So I want you to get in there this afternoon. I want you to, I want you to be confident, yeah. be bold, be bold, yeah. right? right? And go in there and clearly package up what you got. But I believe in you. I think you got some serious potential. Jason, sit down, my man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Are you enjoying this experience? Oh, yeah. Here's what I think you're going to have to do. And, and, and because my job is to get you ready to pitch mm -hmm. to the world. Right now, you, you've got a little bit of monkey mind. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I can recognize it in you is because I've got it too. Mm -hmm. I'm a learner. Yeah. I'm hungry for knowledge. I could learn something from anybody, anywhere, anytime. You've got that trait. That is an unbelievable trait that you've got. The problem and challenge with this trait is that we chase lots of rabbits. So when you get ready to pitch this afternoon, you got to get down to some real clarity. You got more ideas than you can execute. Mm -hmm. We got to stick on one idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if not, you and I are going to have this conversation a year from today. Monkey mind people have a tendency to start and not finish. Yeah. We got to buckle down and I got to get you focused. I've been thinking about you from the time I met you at that ZJ event. You stood out. You're working all of your hours to build somebody else's business. Yes. And at some point, we got to get you off the bench and get in the game. Yes. So my business coach, Mark Fortune, taught me when I first became this, the, the concept of a cost opportunity. Mm -hmm. For every minute that you're working on that is a minute you can't work on building yes. your dream. You got a career that put, pays the bills and you're trying to yeah. do it. At some point, yes. you, you got to take the risk. It's going to be messy and unpredictable. You may fall flat on your face. Yes. You may fall flat on your face. That's okay. Fail faster. Don't be a wantrepreneur. Cody, sit down, my friend. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me. I've been interested in your story from the moment Brock told me. I'm looking at you, and I see your potential, okay? But I was also disappointed. You know, you couldn't be here last night. I'm not saying it's your fault but you missed an important part. You were late this morning. You, you understand what I'm saying? These are basic things. Punctuality, showing up on time, being ready to go, having your A game on. 
understanding how your actions affect other people. Because if we go to a boardroom setting and you showed up 37 minutes late, you don't even get a shot. Because here's what's gonna happen. These basic amateur mistakes hide the special that you've got. Where I think you are compared to most 25 year olds is you're way advanced, okay? But there's still some basic ingredients. Will you come through for me? All right. Hey, Christy. Hey, Coach. Sit down. Hey, how are you? I'm fabulous. I feel like you have real authentic dreams, hopes and dreams. Thank you. I think the biggest thing you lack is confidence. You have something so powerful on the inside that wants to come out. Mm -hmm. It's almost an injustice when you don't get it out. Yes. You know, I just need that slingshot to get me yeah. to the next level, to hold me accountable. What'll happen is I'll get inspired and I might write several pages. Right. But then it'll be a couple months yeah. before I'll write again. There's no structure, there's no accountability, there's yeah. no roadmap of how I can get this done. I've never written a book. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not about being perfect. It's not about making it just right. We just got to get something out that people can read. You've got a compelling story. It'll touch families, women and men all across the South. It'll touch them in a way they've never been touched. You got a real chance to win this thing. Thank you so much. To be the true zebra. Okay. So buckle down for me. Okay. Get in that boardroom and articulate. <laughs> Fair Attack. enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Fair enough. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. We've talked a lot about being a zebra. What we've not talked as much about is the cheetah. See, a cheetah runs faster than every other animal in the animal kingdom. A cheetah wakes up and is on the attack. Cheetahs wake up and say, it's not perfect, but we're gonna get started. We're gonna get started. We're gonna make something happen. They take the lower level resources to higher levels of productivity. In my mind, that's a cheetah. Cheetahs are resourceful. Cheetahs figure out how to get things done. And so one of the things we wanted to give you today was a cheetah challenge about how to make it happen. We're gonna test your resolve. We're gonna test your resourcefulness. We're gonna test your ability to solve a problem. And we're gonna throw something at you that you didn't expect. The challenge is how fast can you get to where you need to get. So in just a few minutes, we're gonna drop you off in the middle of Nashville. You have got to get to the Nashville City Club and get to the 20th floor. There is an executive who is sitting and waiting on you. He's waiting on you to get in front of him, to pitch him on why everybody needs a coach in life. And he's gonna push back, he's gonna challenge you, he's gonna tell you if it's not good enough, or he's gonna say, you're the first one here and you made the best pitch on why somebody needs a coach. Hayden, when you're ready, stop the bus. Right. When we stop this bus, you're gonna get off. And it's totally <laughs> on you, on how you're gonna to get to where you wanna get and how fast you can get there. You're off to the races. I'm running. No, no, dude. No, dude. No, no. Jesus Christ. All right, no, that's cool. Chill one, Fourth Avenue North. It's on this road, please don't drive any further if it's back there. I mean, if it's back there, then I need to just get out. This is four, so this she say make a left. I don't know where, where it will be. If you can, 
Uh, I can't go about this is one way. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna just hop out right here. I'm a little out of breath, but um, uh, from what I know, I'm here to tell you why you need a coach. Um, and the first thing I want to tell you is that obviously the word coach uh, begins with a C. Uh, and the C to me stands for confidence. Um, and I believe that with the confidence that you have uh, in you, yes, while coach talks about you know the talent and it's not all about talent, but the reason why people sometimes suffer is because they lack confidence. Um, I believe that with your confidence, with having another coach, someone that's motivating, someone that's pushing you, someone that's putting positive energy into your life will build that confidence for you to go out into the world. The next thing is an O. O is for opportunity. I believe that having a coach will expand your opportunity. An A stands for another level. How can I take your talent, how can I take your gifts and everything that you have to another level. How can I push you? So a great coach will be able to instill you and put you in another level. The last C stands for craft. Um, C-R-A-F-T, craftiness. So what are you gonna do in this business? When, when the rubber meets the road, when we're not getting as much business as we want to, we're not getting as much sales as we want to, what are you gonna do? A great coach will be able to take your craft, hone in on you, and be able to push you and mold you. And the last thing is H. The H stands for humbleness to know that it's not about you, that it's about the team. We always talk about the acronym of team, that together everyone achieves more. I'm Brandon Maxwell. Who in the world is Brandon Maxwell? Well, I'm standing right in front of you. How do I even know that I'm supposed to need that? Yeah. Well, I think the way you figure out that you need a coach um, is because everyone needs one. I don't um, think I need one. I'm you, pretty self-actualized. I'm happy where I'm at in life. How'd you get there? You're pitching me on why I need a coach. But you didn't get there on your own. And the reason why I tell you that you need a coach is because you didn't get there by yourself. Now, while, yes, you're sitting here, you're successful, you've done a lot of great things, you're comfortable in your life, I'm glad you're successful. I'm glad you're comfortable, but it is, are, you, are you done? Are you, are you just going to settle at just being comfortable? There's so much more for you that what you can do. There's so much more that, of, of a talent that is in you that I believe a great coach will push you to even greater things. What's next for you? How are you going to challenge yourself? You passed the chief challenge. Good job. Way to go, man. For sure. Good luck. Thank you. All right.
People don't eat out because they're hungry. They eat out for the experience. The experience comes from the atmosphere, from service, from food, from value, for everything. And so we give them more of that by making certain that the service is impeccable from beginning to end. Seasonings that we have started with our Demas' seasoning salt, which my father created that seasoning a long time ago. And we have since created a couple of extra seasonings like our Cajun seasoning and our chili seasoning. 75% of our menu is made with these seasonings. So these seasonings are great on anything that you can have. Demas's, bring your family to dine with our family. FM Mortgage is your local full service mortgage lender. A top five lender with THDA and RD, FM prides itself on fast expert service. Belinda Arinder of Murfreesboro is a 20 year mortgage veteran. An award winning top producing mortgage originator, Belinda is a recognized expert in the mortgage industry. Getting you home with less stress is the goal. FM Mortgage and Belinda Arinder can help make this goal a reality. Contact Belinda at 615 416 4464. Well, guys, we're here before you go into the boardroom in front of three zebras and cheetahs. We've got Phil Cavender, one of the top life insurance producers in the world, and maybe the best person I've ever seen pitch anything. True genius. We've got Kendra Cook, one of the top real estate agents in the world. She's a cheetah. She runs faster than all the other agents. And we've got Peter Demos the owner of Demas' Restaurants, one of the greatest restaurant chains, who's getting ready to open a new restaurant called Peter D's. He has his own seasonings all over the country. Now it's time to take it to the boardroom to pitch your story in three minutes to three zebras and cheetahs. Uh, Phil Cavender, Cody Hawkins, okay. Kendra Crick, wonderful to meet you. Peter Demas. Peter, Peter Demas, wonderful to meet you. Um, I've overcome some obstacles. I've been shot at, I've been chased down the street, I've been jumped, I've been beat up, and I could have rolled over and, and given up, but I didn't. Certain situations uh, in my childhood didn't allow me to enjoy some of the finer things like the other children, and I saw those as problems, um, and I found solutions to those problems through going out in the environment and taking what I wanted. Um, for the past three years, I've been running three businesses during college. I do private bartending. I own my own landscaping company, and I repair iPhones and iPads out of my house. Um, and I try to find solutions to other people's problems. Not just the problems that they tell me, but the underlying problems. I read their body language, and I try to see the underlying message. I try to read between the lines. I don't want to sell them a product they don't need. I want to sell them a solution to their problems that they have. Uh, I think one thing that motivates me every morning is that I'm thirsty for knowledge and I'm thirsty for success. I see you three sitting right there and I want to be in those shoes. Hello, I am Christy Neal and I have a very unique story that must be told. My unique past of being a strong southern Christian woman that found herself living a double life and having an affair in my church to this point here, coming full circle to being able to talk about my story and unveil my ugly for the world to see, to help other women, makes me very unique. I feel that I am to be the voice that I needed so desperately to hear years ago. I feel I'm called to write the book that I needed years ago. When all hell broke loose and when it felt like the world was against me, I remember being on my knees. And I remember saying, this will not be for naught. I know good will come of this. I know if I can do it, anybody can do it. I will not stop until I'm on the floor, exhausted, but victorious. Hello, everybody. Hey How you doing today? Good. Uh, my name is Brandon Maxwell. Uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about me uh, that could be an asset to you. Um, I went to a private Christian school right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and now, even though I'm tall, I, I didn't get an athletic scholarship. Uh, even though I love the game of basketball, they, they didn't grant me that opportunity. But I'll tell you what a head resident there did grant me an opportunity to do. He granted me an opportunity to clean floors, to be a floor cleaner. Now that's not the ideal opportunity that most kids will want to have while they're in school but it was an opportunity. It was my scholarship. 
You know, we talk about money. We're talking about the things that we can do for our organization of what we want. We want people to save us money. We want people to make us money. Well, because of my unique past and my unique experiences and what I've developed, my mentors have taught me in such a way not to just see products and not just to see big businesses, but to see people, to see the potential in people, to see people first. See, I believe that you can't have potential without passion because like it, it's like a plane without a pilot. It's not going anywhere. You gotta have it. And I believe that I put that into people. I bring, I bring that, that, that potential that people have and I bring it out of them and I move them into a level of passion. So success to me is measured when I can leave an individual, when I leave this room and you're thinking about what I said and you're thinking about what I've done and I've made your life better and I've impacted your life, even if it's just a little bit, I know that I've been successful. I think Coach Burt says this perfectly. Uh, actually in that book that's in front of you right now, um, he says that when people spend time with you, if they leave you saying, I'm better, that's how you know you're successful. My name is Amina Hatilovak, and I'm the founder of a clothing line called eHati. I'm originally from Bosnia. I moved here in 94 due to a war. I was forced to leave my country. We moved here in August. School started two weeks later. I didn't know English at all. I cried for months, but I didn't give up. Uh, every day I wrote words down, went home. Instead of playing, I taught myself English. It took me nine months to be able to connect with other cats. If I did not go through what I went through, um, I wouldn't be here today in this room with you all. And I feel like there's so many girls out there my age, just think I was 11 going through something like that. And I've seen people getting killed in front of me, you know, I've, but I overcome that. I, I take everything that I can and turn it into positive. So if I can make a difference in one girl's life, I'm happy because I feel like that's what I'm here for. It's not about me anymore. It's about giving back. But I just need somebody to push me over the edge and say, you can do it. Hey guys, my name's Jason Goldsby. That's just the name though. Who am I? First of all, I've learned how to be committed through my parents' personal, personal example. And my second reason I think that I'm a zebra and a cheetah is because the byproduct of a commitment is loyalty. When you're committed and when you're loyal to something, you solve problems because you don't throw something away, you fix it. What are, what's, your, what's your end goal? It's, it's funny you should ask. There is uh, America Text. Uh, I have just started a uh, text message marketing company. The thing that is different about text message marketing is that 98% of all people will open a text. 90% of them will get opened in the first five minutes. There's not an email marketer in the world that can say their email, their email open rate has that. But when people sign up for a list, for Demas's, they sign up for, uh, to receive promotions. You offer something of value to get them on the list, a free appetizer, free free uh, cheesy bread, good stuff, right? It's good, good value there. As a real estate agent, you put that short, you put a short code on a sign and say text 123 Main Street to this number and then you send them a link in there of that property that they do not get just by looking at that sign on that property. I don't have a way to make it look sexy to insurance guys yet. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I don't. It's not, it's not. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, no offense, to me insurance is one of the most boring, boring things, if, yeah, boring things that I, I, you know. You came wanting to look different and run faster in 2014 because you wanted more. You've gone in front of true zebras and cheetahs. They've got feedback for you. Peter, we'll start with you. Uh, to start with you, Cody, um, the thing that impressed me the most is your work ethic. You're willing to work, you're working in several jobs, but I think you need to have direction with that energy. I think you need to be able to take whatever you're wanting and find something, find that one thing you're passionate about and move forward with it. And instead of working three things, work one and work really hard and, 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 and focus on that one thing. Don't measure success by other people. Just, just, just measure it by, by how you feel and what you, you can accomplish for yourself because that's truly where it matters. Kendra? Christy, very passionate, great speaker compelling message, 
could not have been easy to get up here and bear your soul. Um, I think you have a lot to give. I think your message can change the world. And I uh, look forward to reading that book someday. Phil? Mina, what's impressive is all the things uh, that you've done and you take it on yourself and you have the initiative to take it on yourself to be better. And uh, you're going to be a success in life. I think you already have been. Back to Peter. Uh, Jason, it's very good that you have the loyalty. It's very good that you have these traits. But tie in those good things with what you're going to be doing. So, so again, you're not kind of going in both different directions. And, and, I, and I think you will be extremely successful with it. Kendra? Uh, Brandon, I thank you for not coming to us with a victim attitude. You know, I was raised without a dad, and I didn't have this, and I didn't have that. And you took what you did have, and, and you changed your life, and you're going to change many lives going forward, including your kids. Uh, the one thing that I missed with you was what's the vehicle? I want you to figure out what you're really passionate in, put all that into one message, and take it out into the masses, because I think you have a bright, bright future. Guys, we come to the conclusion. I see a zebra and cheetah in every one of you. But in the competition, there is a winner. Nobody's losers, because what you've done that's compelled us so much, I want to tell you what we're going to do for you, starting with Amina. Amina, you talked about your website. Our chief optimizer, Brock Patterson, was back there working on getting eHottie.com for you, because that's your brand. But we're going to do you one better. I'm going to deploy my web team to help you build your first website. And my goal for you is that at some point soon you get to leave working at the trucking company and you get to go start your dream. Jason, Jason, what we're gonna do for you is we're gonna teach you how to do your podcast. Because of our radio show on WLAC that's global on iHeartRadio, we, we have the technology and we know how to do this. Cody, multiple people said this young man has unlimited potential. Just needs a little bit of confidence. I think you've got that confidence. I think what you really need is a coach. So we're gonna coach you for the next year into reaching your potential. Christy, I think you had one of the most compelling stories. Taking a mess and turning it into a message. And although sometimes quiet and a little shy, you really rose to the occasion here. And so for you, I'm gonna personally help you write your book that you've been looking for for you to get started and to go do what you want to do because this message needs to come out to the world. And it doesn't need to wait, it needs to come now. Brandon, I see uh, a future coach and so I'm gonna personally mentor you and I'm gonna put you as one of our coaches and mentors at the Burt Center. Now to the winners. In this presentation, based on the feedback from these experts, each one of you did a great job. But there was one person that had the most compelling argument for why they're a zebra in the world. They look different. And that one winner of this contest tonight was Christy Neal. When I think about this book that Dr. Kobe Jubinville and I wrote, it's part zebra, it's part cheetah. We believe as a guest panel and as an expert that Christy, you're the zebra and Brandon, you're the cheetah. Both of you have won. Can you truly change people's lives in two days? Can you really do that? And I just had to get on here and say, yes. Yes, you have truly transformed my life in two days.